Perhaps you remember that in a previous video I mentioned something about keeping a maintenance log for the motorhome. In that video I had also mentioned that the previous owners didn't keep very good records of the maintenance on this motorhome. Well, the time's come to add to that maintenance log. Perhaps you or someone you know makes a living changing oil, but frankly, the cost of just the oil is enough to inspire me to change it myself. I've also uh, have a zinc additive. I did a little research since I have an older engine. It seems that zinc phosphate levels are lower in oils these days than when my old engine was new. Under normal conditions, that's not a problem. However, the previous owners had the uh, engine overhauled some years back and the benefits of zinc phosphate in oil are now a factor. Since I don't know what the previous owner did, I'm going to assume they didn't properly break in the engine. By that I mean they probably didn't use a uh, high zinc phosphate treatment. What the zinc phosphate does is when the engine gets under high heat and pressure, the zinc phosphate forms a glass film over the metal part. This film protects the metal from wear. As my research seems to indicate, the zinc phosphate additive needs to be used on a new or rebuilt engine for at least the first two oil changes in order to combat the calcium-based detergents in the oil which fight the zinc phosphate from forming the glass coating. Without this phosphate glass coating, flat tappet cams can wear out pretty fast. But uh, once the engine has been broken in, there's no need to keep adding zinc phosphate additive as the uh, lower levels of zinc phosphate in modern oils is adequate. Uh, that is assuming you don't treat your motorhome like a hot rod. Also, the higher concentration of zinc phosphate can make a catalytic converter wear out sooner. So, that being said, on with the oil change. First up, I run the engine for about a minute or two to get the internal parts all coated with oil. What I'm doing is I'm putting new oil in the new oil filter, and there's a reason for that. If I uh, don't put oil in the oil filter, and I turn on the engine after I do all the oil change, then the engine is seen a few seconds without oil running through it. But by putting the oil in the oil can oil filter first, I'm able to shorten that amount of time. Of course, I could just put the empty oil filter in and start the engine, but you know, after doing that uh, several times, the life of the engine can get uh, rather short. So it's just uh, a good idea to put oil in the oil filter before you install it. Now to remove the old oil filter. Use a wrench to do it, and then when it's loose, you remove it by hand. Now we can see where the new filter will be installed. Just screw it right on by hand and then take your wrench and give it a little about a quarter turn. Now with the new filter installed we can move the oil drain pan underneath the oil plug and unscrew it. And we take our 5 8 inch wrench and we try to undo the plug. Um, but of course it's going to be difficult so we need a little bit of leverage. That's why I've got feet. Now all that's required is to unscrew the oil plug and let the, oops, 
Um, let the oil flow out. Make sure your pan, of course, is better lined up. And, of course, eventually it'll run out, and then you can put your plug back in. So now we can start filling up the engine with fresh new oil. And about halfway through the process, I add in the oil treatment. And then, of course, I add in all the rest of the oil. And, of course, check it. Install the oil cap and install the uh, dipstick. And then it's time to start the engine. run the uh, engine a bit more and drive around, I'll check the oil again. Of course you should be checking the oil regularly on the old motorhomes anyway. And that is how to change the oil on a 1988 Fleetwood Jamboree motorhome. When the nation invests in its people, the people invest in their nation.